Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think today it would be appropriate if we pause for a moment to think of those people who lost their lives in the bombings in Baghdad and Medina in recent days. Yeah. The, the people that have suffered and their families at the end of Ramadan, it must be a terrible experience for them. And I think we should send our sympathies and solidarity to them. Yeah. Uh, I join with the Prime Minister in wishing Wales well. Yeah. <laughs> and I will be cheering for Wales along with everybody else. Yeah. That's quiet, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker. Oh, there is life after all. Um, <laughs> 30 years ago, Mr. Speaker, the Shirebrook Colliery employed thousands of workers in skilled, well paid, unionised jobs digging coal. Today, thousands of people work on the same site, the vast majority on zero hours contracts no union recognition, where the minimum wage isn't even paid, doesn't Shirebrook sum up Agency Britain? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, let me join the Leader of the Opposition in, in giving our sympathies and condolences to all those who've been the victims of these in, appalling terrorist attacks, as he says, in, in Baghdad, in Medina, but also uh, in Istanbul um, uh, as well. Uh, on the issue of uh, what has happened in our coalfield communities to see new jobs and new investment uh, come, we have made sure that there is not only now a minimum wage, but now a national living wage. And yes, he talks about one colliery. I very recently visited the site of the Grimethorpe Colliery, where actually there's now one business there, ASOS, I think, now employing almost 5,000 people. So we're never going to succeed as a country if we try to hold on to jobs of industries that have become uncompetitive. We've got to invest in the industries of the future, and that's what this government's doing. Jeremy Corbyn. Mr Speaker, the problem is that if you're on a zero-hours contract, the minimum wage doesn't add up to a living weekly wage. He must understand that. Could I take him northeast of Shirebrook to the Lindsay oil refinery? In 2009, hundreds of oil workers there walked out on strike because agency workers from Italy and Portugal were brought in on lower wages to do the same job. Just down the road in Boston, low pay is endemic. The average hourly wage across the whole country is £13.33. In the East Midlands, it's £12.26. In Boston, it's £9.13. Isn't it time the government intervened to step up for those communities that feel they've been left behind in modern Britain? Well, first of all, we have intervened with a national living wage. We have intervened with more fines against companies that don't pay the minimum wage. We have intervened for the first time, something that Labour never did, of actually naming and shaming the companies involved. Now, those interventions help and can make a difference. But the real intervention that you need is an economy that's growing and encouraging investment. Because what we want are the industries of the future. And that's what you can see in our country. And that's why record numbers are in work. Two and a half million more people have a job since I became Prime Minister. And the British economy has been one of the strongest in the G7. Jeremy Corbyn. Mr Speaker, this government promised it would rebalance our economy. It promised a northern powerhouse. Yet half of 1% of infrastructure investment is going to the North East. London is getting 44 times more than that. Does he not think it's time to have a real rebalancing of our economy and invest in those areas that are losing out so badly? I, I think he is talking down in the performance of uh, parts of our economy that are doing well. If you look at the fastest growing part of our economy, it's been the northwest, uh, not the southeast. If you want to see where exports are growing faster, it's the northeast, uh, not London. There's a huge amount of work to do to make sure that we heal that north-south divide. And for the first time, we've got a government with a proper strategy of investing in the infrastructure and the training and the skills that will make a difference. For years, regional policy was just trying to distribute a few government jobs outside London. Now we've got a strategy that's about skills, that's about training, that's about growth, and it's delivering. Jeremy Corbyn. Well, the idea of this redistribution is very interesting because the investment in London is more than the total of every other English region combined. Does he not think these issues should be addressed? In March, the government 
um, government investment was cut in order to meet its fiscal rule. How does the Prime Minister think the economy can be rebalanced when investment is cut and what little investment remains reinforces the regional imbalances in this country? Well, first of all, I think again he is talking down the North in the questions that he asked. The unemployment rate in the North West is lower than the unemployment rate in London. So I think actually his figures are wrong. But in terms of investment, yes, of course, we need to have the government investment, and we've got it in HS2, we've got it in the railways, the biggest investment program since Victorian time, the biggest investment in our roads since the 1970s. But you can only invest if you have a strong and growing economy. And we know what Labour's rest is, more borrowing, more spending, more debt, trashing the economy, which is what they did in office, and that's when investment collapses. Jeremy Corbyn. Well, Mr Speaker, the Chancellor finally did this week what the Shadow Chancellor asked him to do in the autumn statement, and what I asked the Prime Minister to do last week, yeah. and abandoned a key part of the fiscal rule. Yeah. We now know the deficit was supposed to vanish by 2015, won't even be gone by 2020. Isn't it time to admit that austerity is a failure and the way forward is to invest in infrastructure, invest in growth and invest in jobs? Minister. What he says is simply not the case. The rules we set out always had flexibilities in case growth didn't turn out the way. But the point I'd make to him, I would take... I would take his advice more seriously if I could think of a single spending reduction that he had supported at any time in the last six years. The fact is, this government and the last one, the coalition government, had to take difficult decisions to get our deficit under control. It's gone from 11% of GDP that we inherited, the biggest almost in the entire world, to under 3% this year. That's because of difficult decisions. And if he can stand up and tell me one of those decisions he supported, I'd be interesting to hear it. Jeremy Corbyn. Mr Speaker, concerns about the fiscal rule and investment are obviously spreading on his own benches. Yeah. The work and pension sector and business sector have seen the light. They now agree with my honourable friend, the Shadow Chancellor, in backing the massive investment programme we've been advocating. Yes. Isn't it time that he thanked the honourable member for Hayes and Harlington for the education work he's been doing in this House? Will he now confirm that the Chancellor's fiscal rule is dead and invest in the North East, in Lincolnshire, in Derbyshire, all those places that feel, with good reason, that they've been left behind and the investment is going to the wrong places and they're ending up with few jobs on low wages and insecure employment to boot. Prime Minister. If the investment was going in the wrong places, we wouldn't see two and a half million more people in work and we wouldn't see a fall in unemployment and a rise in employment in every single region in our country. The only area where I think the right honourable gentleman has made a massive contribution is in recent weeks he's come up with the biggest job creation scheme I've ever seen in my life. Almost everyone on the benches behind him has had an opportunity to serve on the front bench. job creation schemes, it's been a bit of a revolving door. They get a job for only a few hours and then they go back to the back benches. But it's a job creation scheme nonetheless and we should thank him for that.